The hip hinge is the lost movement of the Western world. Learning how to do the hip hinge properly will help you effectively stretch your hamstrings and glutes, and it'll help you use your hips and your body the way it was meant to be used. If you are trying to stretch your hamstrings or your glutes and you aren't hip hinging, then you are not stretching them effectively. If you are trying to deadlift, kettlebell swing, or squat, and you are not hip hinging, then you are in for some trouble. Learning a hip hinge means less back pain, less hip pain, and more movement freedom. A hip hinge is as it sounds. It's a hinge at the hips or at the waist. Your pelvis, these two big bones here on the side, glides over your thigh bone or your femur bones. So you can think about it as this rolling action of the pelvis in order for you to hinge from the hip joints. You can also think about your spine as an extension of your pelvis. So when your pelvis moves over your femur bones, your spine doesn't move and your spine simply follows the motion. Watch my spine as I perform this movement. It does not flex or extend at all. It does not move at all. What does move? The pelvis. Now consider a door and how it moves. It moves from the hinge that attaches it to the wall. The only movement that is happening is coming from that hinge. The actual door does not bend or move. That would be silly. The door keeps its shape just the same way that the spine should keep its shape. Here's an example of not a hip hinge. Notice how the spine moves with the pelvis. This is like the door bending. Now, there are two really great ways to teach yourself this movement. The first is using a mirror and placing your hands on your hip bones. As you hinge, tilt your pelvis forward with your hands, kinda like you're purposely spilling a bowl of cereal on a child. Then, watch yourself in the mirror as you do this. Are you hinging at your hips? Is your spine bending? With the mirror, you have real-time feedback. Second, we have assistance from a broom. You should have a broom. You should have a broom, so this should work. Place the broom on your back. Feel these three points of contact, tailbone or hips, middle spine, and the back of your head. Then slowly hip hinge. Keep all three points of contact going down as far as your body allows. If you feel a point of contact come off of the broom, you're no longer hip hinging. You'll notice as you do this that it feels quite different from what you normally do. This is the pattern you need to learn. This is effectively not letting the door move and just hinging from the hinges. Do this a lot and it will teach you a proper hip hinge. So why is it so important that you nail this movement down? Well, the hip hinge is the fundamentals of most lower body movements that you'll do in the gym and in your life. So can you see how if you're using your spine when you're supposed to be using your hips, what that might result in. It might be a problem. The hip joints are better designed for both range of motion and load. So the better you can learn to use your hips, the better for everybody in this equation. Second, and most importantly for this channel, is if you are stretching your hamstrings or your glutes, and you are not properly hip hinging, then you are not actually stretching your hamstrings or your glutes, or at least you're not stretching them as effective as you could be. If you are trying to stretch either of these muscles and you're not hip hinging, then what you're doing is you're actually providing slack to those muscles rather than ultimate tension. So this is actually one of the main reasons why a lot of people never get longer hamstrings and they struggle for so long is because they simply never learn a hip hinge. So learn the hip hinge. Your movement freedom is counting on it. And subscribe to the channel, like the video if it's helped you out. And here's this toe touch routine that you can do now that you know how to hip hinge. Thanks for watching.